In this video, we will continue on page 160. And we're on the second box with a new objective of to record the receipt and payment of inventory. So we're going to click the right checks icon in the banking section of the home page. Select Malibu boats from the pay to order from the drop down list and opens PO, POs, purchase orders, box window should appear. And then if we go to the next page, Here's that box that will appear. We're going to click yes and open purchase order window appears as shown here. Click next to 112 date to place the check mark on the purchase order for 001 line and then click OK. A warning window appears. Click OK and ignore warning since although we owe funds to Malibu boats from previous purchase, we are not uh, accounting for that payment at this point. Then we're going to have 1004 as the check number uh, if it is not already present. And then type 129 as the check date. All right, so let's go through that series. So obviously, once again, our objective is to record the receipt payment, uh, receipt and payment of inventory. So we're going to go back to QuickBooks here. We're going to go to the home page here. Uh, and it says, select the right checks icon in the banking section. So here's the banking section. We're going to select write checks. Number two says select Malibu uh, boats from the pay order drop down. So the pay order drop downs right here. They kind of jumped ahead a bit. We're going to hit there. And if we start typing in here, Malibu, and uh, once we hit tab, we get this warning that pops up. And they're going to say uh, opens. Uh, Open purchase orders exist for this vendor. Do you want to rec uh, receive against one or more of these? What they're trying to do is say, we have a purchase order, meaning a request for inventory, in this case, boats from Malibu. And do we want to link this check to that purchase order? And so number three on page 161 says, we're gonna click yes in this box. And an open purchase order window appears, uh, should appear as shown in the figure. So here's that open purchase order window. Number four then s says, click next to the 112. So we're gonna select that purchase order here. Uh, due date to check mark on the purchase for, there's a purchase order 4001 that we sent to Malibu requests in a boat. And then it says hit okay. And then no warning window popped up, so we're, we are okay. Uh, the check number should be 1004. That's what number five says, so we are okay there. The, I'm going to hit tab. The date should be the 29th, says number six. So I'm going to hit plus to get it up to the 29th. Number seven then says, note that because this transaction was treated as a payment for receipt of inventory, the transaction is recorded using the item tab. And the item being received is is that item order under purchase order number 4001. So if we go down here, every time we've written the check in the past, we were on this expense tab. Now we're on the item tab, which popped up automatically because it was linked to the PO purchase order, which linked that out. All right, and let's see what else we have. We're on number eight. Um, it says... Well, number seven then says, click save and new. So then we're going to finish this transaction by selecting save and new. Then a new uh, check will, of course, pop up. We're going to do a similar type of transaction, this time for Teague. So number eight on page 161 then says, select Teague books from the pay to order drop down list and open PO uh, exist window should appear. Click yes open purchase orders window click next to the 112 13 date to place a check mark on the purchase order 4002 type 1005 is the check number type 130 and then save and close so same activity this time for uh number eight says teague so teague boats tab we have a purchase order that we put in for teague meaning we requested a boat for them and we're going to tie this payment to that request. So we're going to hit yes here. There's the purchase order. So we're going to click next to that purchase order as directed. Then we're going to hit OK. And the 
Teague boat appears down there. The check number is 1005, that's correct, says number 11. The date, though, will now be the 30th, and that's number 12. And we now have this item. Again, it's an item we bought inventory, and we tied it to the PO, and they want to save and close at this point, which we will then do. See what we have on the next page. So we will now go to page 162, and we have entered that information. So the bottom of 162 has another uh, highlighted box with a, an objective of to record the sales of inventory, application of advanced deposit, received and receipt of payment for the balance due. All right. So now we're going to click the Create Invoices icon located in the Customer section of the home page. We're going to select Florida Sports Camp from the Customer drop-down. A billable time cost window should appear indicating that this customer has billable costs. Okay, so we're going to go to this tab and we're going to select Invoices. Now many times the invoice will be the first button we hit in the sales transaction. Notice it's the first one in the transaction list but in this case it may not be because we may have a purchase order that we uh, tied beforehand and or uh, deposits that we tied out so when we select the um, invoice here and we type in as number two says the customer of Florida sports once we hit tab this window pops up and it's saying the customer or job you selected has outstanding billable time and or costs. So do you want to select the outstanding billable time and cost to add them to the invoice? And we are going to say, duh, 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 let's go to the next page here. We're on the next page. It says, check the save uh, this as a preference checkbox as shown in figure 714 and then hit OK. So we're going to say save this as the preference and then hit OK, meaning that's what's going to generally happen most of the time. Notice that we have multiple tabs up here. We're in the time tab, nothing's there. We have an expense tab, a mileage, and an items tab. And notice the item is where we're going to go most likely because we've hit a purchase order for this item and that would be over here in the item tab. So let's see what we have next. Number four says, click the items tab to reveal the information shown in figure 719. Note that this window in, uh, identifies that an item has been received uh, for Florida Sports Company and is available for billing. Click next to 129, uh, 13 date in the column to place the check mark there, indicating you would like to bill the customer for this item. All right, so we will check this off. So once again, we are in the items tab. We will bill the customer for this item. Number five says click OK and then type 130 2013 in the invoice and 10001 in the invoice number. Click the hide history and uncheck the print later checkbox and then complete the invoice by adding the invoice number, a bill to address, and ship to address as shown in figure. 720 right here okay so let's do that we're gonna hit OK and then if we run through this invoice we want to like it make it look like the invoice on page uh, 164 so we could hide this over here and the invoice date is uh, 130 so that's correct the invoice number we wanted to change from 10001 that's the only time we'll have to change that the date I mean the billable I'm gonna add 78 highway 50 Orlando Florida 31310 and ship to should be the same so it's Florida sports camp 78 highway 50 Orlando Florida 31310 tab 
and we have no information here here or here that's okay and then we're okay there and then we do need to hit the sales tax here and we want the state tax which will give us that 6.5 and that's where we're at so far so then number eight says apply credits button so we will then hit the apply credits here all right so the apply credits button is located here so we're going to say click on the apply credits and it, we have this will pop up say the charges to this transactions must be recorded before continuing do you want to record charges now and if we go to the book it then says click yes to items to accept the charges you made uh, to the invoice and customer on applied credit windows should appear like the one here so we'll then click yes and you have okay would you like to uh, yes okay so here's the applied credit window that looks like the picture on page 164 and then we will go to page 165 which says note that the credit balance is shown and the deposit will record earlier this month and that it is pre-checked for uh, application click done to apply this credit to the balance owed on the invoice and then select sales tax click save and new to record this invoice click yes when asked to apply payment differently and yes when asked to save changed information select performance rentals from the customer drop down list and click the items tab okay so it's already checked off this is the deposit that we entered before so they gave us a deposit beforehand we are now creating the invoice applying the 17.5 deposit to it so we will hit done here and we have the 70,000 sales tax bring it up to 74,550 we applied this deposit because this individual had already paid us 17,5 for it therefore they owe us 5750 as shown here so then number 11 says we're going to hit save and new so we'll hit save and new and there we have that I'm going to go to view and open windows so I can see the open windows and just so we can see some detail on this so we see what happened if we go to the customer receivable and we look at the detail for Florida we now see that we entered this deposit which means they owed us negative and then then we gave the invoice which was a seventy four thousand dollar boat and that brings the balance to to this amount now of course they owe us the difference the fifty seven fifty which is the invoice of seventy four less the deposit that they gave us before we made the invoice okay so now we're gonna do this again for the other individual which is performance rentals so we're going to do that. We're going to we're going to we're going to check the check column next to the 130 date. Click OK. Then we're going to apply the credits again. Click Yes. Apply sales tax. Save and close. So let's do that again. The other customer we had, number 12, says it's performance rentals tab. It's going to say there's something tied to this. That something isn't time. It's items, meaning it's inventory. So we purchased a boat from Teague in this case, and the boat uh, is 78750. We're going to click on that boat, then we will hit OK. Now that boat has been applied here, we need to add sales tax. I'm going to hit the drop down and put state tax. That means that's 6.5% of the sales price, making the total bill. 83,868 and 75 cents then we're going to apply any credits because of course we already collected deposit on this amount so we're going to go to apply credits up here and we're going to say yes yes here's the credit that we want to apply this this company already paid us 19,687 done so they owed us 83 for the invoice minus this 19,6 meaning they still owe us 64,181. Now we can select save and close like so. And here's this transaction. We got the deposit first, then we had the invoice, 
now they owe, still owe us this 64,181. All right, let's see what we have next. We are now on the bottom of page 165. We have a new box with a new objective of to record the payment and deposit of funds from boat sales. Number one, click receivable payments icon located in the customer section of the home page. Select Florida Sports Camp from the receive drop down. Type 57,050 uh, in the amount received. Type 130 as the date received. Type check number and save and new. All right, so let's do those steps first. We will then go to our home page, back to the home page here. And number one says we're going to receive payment. So now we, we made the invoice. Now we're going to get a check in the mail. When the check comes in the mail, we click on this. And who did the payment come from? In this case, Florida. I'm just going to hit tab. And, Flor and every invoice related to Florida will then pop up at the bottom down here. So in this case, we have an invoice that was for 47, outstanding balance of 57.50. And number three says that happens to, to be the amount of the check, 57050, that we received, number four says, on January 30th. So that is correct. And it's a check. The check number is 4532. And now this invoice is selected, meaning we're going to tie this check out to this invoice, invoice number 10001, and they now owe us nothing. And number six says we hit save and new, save and new. If we look at the customer balance detail now, of course, for Florida Sports, gave us a deposit, we made the invoice, then the check came in the mail, they no longer owe us any more money. Let's do the same thing. If we if we come back over here and do this again, I've got two of these open. All right, back to the home page. I'm going to go back into here because I think I closed it on accident. And we will go in here again, and let's do this again. So the book then says that we're going to select performance rentals. We're going to type 64181, date January 30th, check number, save and close and then we'll record the deposits for the banking section. So same thing, performance rentals. I'm just going to type that in there. I'm going to hit tab and this invoice pops up automatically hopefully. The amount that they paid is 64,181.25 of course because that's the amount they owe and once that happens I hit tab. They now owe us zero so that is correct. Tab, they paid us with a check check number 10885 and then we will select save and close now of course if we look at the balance detail we are no longer owed money from Florida now if we look at the at the trial balance from Florida or performance rentals so if we look at the trial balance that money did not go into our checking account it went into this middle fund this undeposited funds here so these are the two deposits that are in here now. What we need to do is credit this and debit it into the bank account. Of course, we're not going to do that with a journal entry. We're just going to uh, deposit to the bank account, and that's how this will happen. So this is number 12. Well, we're then going to go to the bank, record deposit, and that's where we left off. We're going to hit Next and click next to both the cash receipts dated 130 and then click save and close so we're going to go here and we're going to check these two off as soon as we get those checks in the mail of course we're running to the bank with that hundred and twenty one thousand dollars and depositing it okay and both those came in on the same day we went and deposited it in the bank save and close now if we go to the trial balance it's now in the bank and the undeposited funds representing the funds that we're holding on to the checks is now zero and the amount is in the bank all right let's see what we have next on the bottom of page 166 we have the new objective in the new highlighted box which is to record checks written for expenses and inventory parts so we're gonna click write checks we're gonna type the check number there it should pop up automatically and then we will put the date of 131. So let's go to the home page. We're going to write checks in the banking section. 
write checks as shown and there's the check it's coming out of the bank of florida check number should pop up automatically at this time i'm going to make the date january 31st hit tab and turn the page we are now on page 167 and it says we're going to type um, manchester insurance here click setup because this will be a new uh, vendor that's going to be a vendor it's going to be a uh, manchester insurance is the company here's the address we'll click ok and let's stop there so i'm going to type this in here we're going to write in the check to manchester insurance and when i hit tab it's going to say we don't have that do you want to add it we could either do a quick add or a setup the setup will give us more information where we can type in the address and whatnot so we do want to set it up as a vendor most people we pay to will be vendors because we're purchasing something from them in this case we're purchasing insurance therefore we're going to get this window i'm going to hit tab tab uh the date we could just put 013113 tab it's manchester insurance tab and then we'll put the address down here. I'm going to hit enter. 234 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 91335. Also want to pull that address over here by hitting the copy and OK. And then we can hit OK, and that leads us on number 9. So we'll go back over here. And number 9 said OK. Then number 10 says type 22,000 in the check amount. And then select New. And we want to have an Other Account Types option. And then select Other Current Asset from the drop down. Continue. Prepaid Insurance is going to be the type of account. Press Tab. OK, so let's do that. The amount that we're going to pay is 22,000. Tab, Tab, no memo, Tab. Notice we're in the expense side, not the item side. But when we pay for insurance, notice we always pay for insurance before we use it. Therefore, to be a proper and an accrual basis, it's actually going to be an asset account called prepaid insurance. They're telling us to go in there and add it. A lot of times, most people would do it in a similar fashion. And I'm going to try to show you that. If, if we type in the account we want, which is going to be called prepaid and insurance and I hit tab it's gonna ask me if do we want to set it up so I'm gonna hit tab it says do you want to set this up we're gonna say yes now it guesses that we want it to be set up as an expense account that's not the case in this case we want it to be an asset account so we're gonna hit the drop down over here and we want it to be an other current asset type of account here then we'll hit continue now it's an other current asset it's prepaid insurance that's what we want so we're going to hit save and close and there we have the other side so this is of course decreasing the, the bank account and debiting an asset in this case called prepaid insurance then it says to hit save and new if we looked at the trial balance we have now created an account called prepaid insurance it's been debited and of course cash went down with the credit all right, back to the checks, back to the book. We are now on the next item. Number 17 says type 1007, already should be in there. The 13th Chevron is who we're going to pay it to. We're going to we're going to set up uh, if the name is not found and then select vendor and then click okay and then here's the address so let's do the same thing I'm gonna hit tab that's correct that's correct the vendor is now going to be number 19 says the number is the vendor is Chevron we're gonna hit tab it's gonna say we don't have a Chevron we're gonna set it up we're gonna set it up the full setup instead of the quick setup meaning the quick setup will just give us the name the full setup will allow us to enter the address it is a vendor that we are paying to most of the time it will be and then we can go through this again and the date 01313 
Company Chevron. The address we can put down here, number 23 on page 168, says the address is 2389 Peach Tree Boulevard, Atlanta, Georgia, 30311. Then I'm going to copy that over here. OK, OK, and that is now in there. Number 24 says click OK. Number 25 says type 1600. That's going to be the check amount. Then we're going to go to the items because we're buying inventory in this case apparently. We're going to buy air filters. We want 25 of them. Click in the next line below the air filter you just added and we're also going to buy engine oil. We're going to buy 150 of that and then filters 25 of that. So at the end of the day we want it to look like this. Then we'll hit save and new. Okay, so therefore, what we want to do is go down here. It's not going to be an expense this time. It's going to be an item. So we're buying inventory. We're going and buying inventory. We're not buying boats in this case, but we're buying oil filters and that kind of stuff for when we service the items. So the check amount is actually going to bring out to 1600, and it's going to consist of these inventory items. So the inventory items should add up to that once we are done with this hopefully so we're in the items tab make sure you're in the items tab first item is an air filter so I'll type in air filter we're saying that those should cost uh, $28 per filter and we're buying 25 of them oops we're buying 25 of them therefore that's 700 we're also going to buy now there's no customer that we're going to apply this to and so we're also going to buy engine oil this is we're just stocking up on this stuff of course we're going to buy 150 of that bringing the balance to 600 for that and then number um, 33 says we're buying oil filters as well and we need 25 of those that's 300 and so we have, we look like the picture now, we got 700, 600, and 300, which hopefully adds up to the 1, 6. And when, then we can hit save and new. Save and new. And we have recorded that transaction. Then number 36 says type 1008 at the check number. If it is not already there, type 131. Then Central Florida Gas and Electric. And this time we're going to quick add that. All right, next one tab that pops up automatically date is still the 31st and we're going to put in this time central florida gas and electric tab instead of doing the full setup to add the date we're just going to quick add it and it's the vendor because we don't really need their address or anything and then we're going to say uh, what the amount is which is on the next page. Let's go to the next page. We are now on page 169 and we're adding it as a vendor and the amount will be 180. It's going to be an expense and we're going to call that expense utilities. So we're going to go back over here. The amount is 890 tab. Notice there's no date there but that's I mean no address there but that's okay. Tab. No memo. Tab. Now we're over in the items tab. We don't want to be in the items tab because we're not buying items or inventory at this time. We are in the expense tab. We could call it, uh, you know, electric expense or gas and electric, but we usually often call it utilities expense. So we're going to type that in there. It's an expense type account ex expressed by the expense over here. And there we have that. All right, number 44 says save and new, and then we'll do it again. We're going to type 1009 as of the 31st, then we're going to pay the phone bill, Verizon. We're going to quick add it. It's going to be a vendor. There's the amount, expense, telephone, and expense will be the account. Let's do that. So I'm going to hit save and new. We're just writing the checks at the end of the month. Next one, number 9, says that's the check number. That's the date. 47 uh, says that we're going to pay... Verizon and hit tab and we're going to quick set this up Verizon will be a vendor okay we are paying uh, 
quick add vendor the amount of 1700 that's number 50 tab we have no address but that's okay because we don't really need one we are now in the expenses tab like we should be and once again we're going to name that account probably most people would name it telephone expense tab and then we can finally save and close this so save and close and we have that in there and of course those checks are now have now been written here we can see that activity crediting or reducing the checking account all right let's see what we have on the next page we now see that we will be on page 170 it says to record checks written to pay bills so click the pay bills icon in the vendor section of the home page the pay bills window should appear click next to the 11013 date to select the bill for payment click uh, in the assigned check number option click pay selected bills type uh, 1010 as the check number okay so let's recap that real quick what we have done is we've entered checks <coughs> and now we're going to record uh, the written to pay bills so click the pay bills icon so in this case we're gonna we're gonna enter uh, if the bills had been entered here then we would check this icon to basically pay the bills so entering this icon here would basically uh, credit accounts payable and debit various expense accounts then we'll be over here to pay the bills icon and any bills that have been entered that have not yet paid will show up here. So click the date of 110. And that's this bill here. So we're going to click next to that bill. This field uh, may not be blank. Okay okay and then number three says click the assign uh, check number so uh, we want to assign the check number rather than uh, having them uh, be assigned as we print them so down here to be printed we don't want to select that we want to assign check numbers because obviously again we are not actually you know printing the checks we're just going to assign the check numbers so then click the select pay selected bills so we will pay selected bills and then of course we need to assign the check number we just need to assign the first check number if it was a series in this case we only have one and then it would assign them afterwards so the check number is 1010 that would be the number on you know the checks the actual checks which of course would not be generated by quickbooks uh, they're going to be outside of quickbooks and we'll hit ok and then uh, done all right We are now on page 171. The bottom of page 171 says to create new job for existing customers. We're going to click the customers button in the customer section of the home page. We're going to select Florida Sports Company. We're going to click the new customer and job button. All right. So if we're in the home page, we could go to the customers here. We can also go to the customers here. We can also go to the drop down customers and go to the customer center here three ways to get to the same section which would be basically this section which will show us our list of customers on the left and the detail of those customers activity in this section on the right now um, we we may actually have jobs for customers so construction companies would often use jobs and we're going to use jobs when we deal with the service items so if we someone came in for an engine checkup and stuff or something like that we may go under the customer and then under the job. So if we select Florida Sports Company, I'm going to actually highlight Florida Sports Company here. Make sure that is highlighted before we hit the new customer jobs drop down. And in this case, we want to add a job. So when we do this, it's, what it's going to do is make a sub job number under this customer. So it's like this customer. And then within this customer, we have this particular job, which will be related to this customer. So we'll add a job, and this screen will then pop up. 
And then we will be on page 172 where it says type 50005 as the job number and then click OK. So that is what we will do. The job number will be 50005. That's all we basically need. I'm just going to I'm just going to type that. That's it. That's the job number. We're just going to hit OK. And now we have that job number under that Florida Sports Company. So that's where we're going to apply jobs like when we do our service jobs or our oil changes and stuff like that. We want to do the same thing for Freebirds. So select Freebirds. So it's so uh, number five on page 172 says select Freebirds. Click New Job. We're going to add a job. We're going to call that job 50002 and hit OK. And so then our icon, our window should look like this window. So let's do that. We're on Freebirds. New customer. Add job. Job number 50002. And that's it. We're just going to save it. And now under the customer Freebird, we have this job number 50002. Okay, so let's see what we have on the next item. Okay, so the next item we're going to we're going to complete the timesheet. So we're going to stop here on this one and the next item we'll complete the timesheet, we'll apply them to the to the jobs and that's what we'll pick up.